السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala All praise is definitely due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has blessed us the one who has granted us this beautiful month, the one who has granted us such a beautiful opportunity. This feeling in this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is no short than electrifying and spiritual completely. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the blessedness of this month. And may He grant us forgiveness in this month. May He increase the love and the bond that we have in our hearts for one another. And may He alleviate the suffering of all those across the globe who are going through difficulty and turmoil, including ourselves. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and send complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who came to us with the message of peace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The pearls of peace that were recited from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine if he were to recite in our midst, Subhanallah. Imagine if the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were to recite the Qur'an. What type of recitation do you think there would be? May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and upon his entire household and upon all his companions and upon all the scholars of this deen who have struggled through the years in a way that they have preserved it, protected it, learned it, practiced it, conveyed it to others so that it came to us. May Allah bless us all and make us from those who are patient. Make us from those who bear patience and who can fulfill salah and who can establish zakah and who can establish the peace not only within ourselves but even amongst ourselves. Brothers and sisters in Islam, MashaAllah, this month has commenced a beautiful blessed month, the best of the Islamic calendar. The theme we have chosen to speak on this year, Pearls of Peace from the Noble Qur'an. It is a book of peace. And indeed it is full of the ingredients of peace. Many of us are searching for peace and contentment. Many of us are searching for happiness. Many of us are searching so that we can alleviate whatever suffering we are going through. But we have not searched through the pages of the book of peace coming from the owner of peace. As-salam, one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace and may He bless us in every single way. If we are to look at the categories of peace, my brothers and sisters, inner peace and outer peace. The peace within oneself, in the heart, within the veins, within the blood, within the mind and within the system. And then the outer peace amongst one another, with my family members, with the community, with the ummah at large, with humanity and with all creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the peace that we are searching for. Over and above that, there are two other categories of peace, my brothers and sisters. The peace that we would like in this world, and then the peace that we want in the akhirah, in the life after death. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that He will address those who have entered paradise with peace. Their greeting on the day that they meet Him will be peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it to us. So as we are searching for this peace and we open the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you know what is the first pearl of peace that we find? Amazingly, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Analyze that statement. That is the statement of peace, my brothers and sisters. Before you commence the Qur'an and its recitation, you need to utter these words. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared in the Qur'an, فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And if you would like to read the Qur'an, you need to commence by seeking the protection of Allah from shaytan the accursed. Without seeking Allah's protection from the devil, from shaytan the accursed, 
How would we be able to learn the peace, to feel the peace, to understand the peace and to achieve the comfort? Many of us, when we read the Qur'an, we have no concentration. <coughs> Many of us, when we read the Qur'an, we are far away from its meaning. That is because the devil has contaminated our hearts and our minds sometimes. This is why we start off with this blessed statement, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ I seek the protection of Allah from shaitan, the accursed, the devil. So let's remember this is a powerful supplication. Let us all use it. Let us all understand it. Let us all repeat it constantly. And make sure before you read the Quran, the book of peace, before you can extract the pearls, the first key to it is to seek the protection of Allah from the devil. The devil comes to us and he snatches away the beauty of the Quran. He snatches away from our minds and hearts the beauty of the Quran. Yet it is the most beautiful word. It is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order to recognize its beauty, we need to be protected from the devil. It is the devil that takes the peace away from our hearts and our minds and our veins and our system and from our families and our communities. It is the devil that makes us fight and argue. And it is the devil that splits us and disunites us. And it is the devil that makes us fight one another in a way that we would never be proud of ourselves. Thereafter, we look at the next most powerful statement. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah. Most gracious, most merciful. Most forgiving, most merciful. Or we could say, most merciful in a specialized way and most merciful in a general way as well. Subhanallah. This is Allah. This is the peace. The peace is connected to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at how he starts. He has told us to start off by saying his name, acknowledging that he is full of mercy, compassion and forgiveness. If he wanted, he could have said, say in the name of Allah, the owner of the severe torment and punishment. He could have said that. But my brothers and sisters, the heart requires that flicker wherein we all have the hope in the mercy of Allah. Brothers and sisters, every one of us may have done deeds that we are not proud of. This is the month of forgiveness, the month of peace. We are reading the book of peace, we are in the house of peace. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with the forgiveness which is full of peace. Are we all ready, inshallah, to start a new leaf? Inshallah, a leaf that is clean and pure, wherein whatever we write for ourselves, we will be proud to read on the day of Qiyamah. Tuba liman wujida fi sahifatihi istirfaran kathira. Give good news to he upon whose pages a lot of istirfar and repentance is found. When your pages are looked at, a lot of istirfar, a lot of repentance must be found. Why? Because Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. What peace? Subhanallah. If you think for a moment of the mercy of Allah, you will feel the peace within you. If you feel the spirituality in this house of Allah, you will feel the peace within you. Do you realize tonight we have read one and a quarter juz and we have fulfilled twenty rakaat of taraweeh? I don't think we are tired by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is so beautiful and it flows so well. It is the owner of peace who has granted that to us. It is a spirituality of the jama'ah, the congregation that we have. The muslimin, the mu'mineen, all walks of life, all colors, come together. This is what peace is all about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to open the Qur'an with what is known as Surah Al-Fatiha. The opening Surah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah. Every aspect of praise, every kind of praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the owner of praise. Praise Him regularly, my brothers and sisters. You will achieve peace. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Rabb of the worlds. What is the meaning of Rabbun? The one who created, nourishes, cherishes, provides, protects. The one who is in absolute control of every single aspect of entire existence, that is termed Rabbun. All praise is due to He who created me and you and everything in existence. Subhanallah. That is all praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a powerful opening statement. And immediately after that, He says, 
Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. This is the second time we are hearing it. Most forgiving, most merciful, a loser would be he or she who did not achieve the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Losers. May Allah make us from the winners. May He make us achieve the forgiveness. And may He grant us goodness in this world and in the next. Then He says, Maliki Yawmiddin. He is the owner of the day of judgment. The owner of the day of judgment. From this we learn that we are answerable to Allah. And that answerability, we would achieve a lot of hope by understanding His mercy and forgiveness. Imagine if He had said, I'm never going to forgive certain people, even if they seek forgiveness. Does He ever say that? Never. Even a person who has engaged in shirk and association of partners with Allah, if he seeks forgiveness, Allah says, my doors are open, I will forgive him. It is only he who associates partners with Allah and dies upon that condition without seeking forgiveness. For him, Allah has issued a stern warning. But here, Allah is saying, he is the owner of the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, let us learn, do not become judgmental when it comes to one another. Sometimes a person who might appear not to be as religious outwardly is perhaps much more religious within. They perhaps have much more peace and comfort inside and they are maybe struggling to adopt the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one by one just like we are. None of us are perfect. My brothers and sisters, I am trying and you are trying. We are all trying. Eradicate your bad habits. Seek the assistance of Allah. Listen to what Allah says. A powerful statement which we utter. You alone we worship, you alone we ask for help. You want peace, worship Allah alone. You want peace, ask Allah's help and assistance. Remember, He is Rabbul Alameen. This is why He is saying, You alone we worship, you alone we seek for help, because He is the owner of every single aspect of existence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. And after that is a time for us to make dua. Raise our hands and make dua. We ask Allah's blessings. What is the most powerful dua of peace? What is the greatest aspect of peace that I could have or you could have? Listen to it. <laughs> Guide us to the straight path. The path of peace. The path of the pleasure of Allah. If Allah has given me and you hidayah and guidance, what more do I want? I will be the happiest person in the dunya. Ajaban li amri mu'mini, fa inna amrahu kullahu lahu khayr. Amazing are the affairs of a true believer. They are all good for him or her. When goodness strikes or happens, when goodness comes in the direction of a believer, he is thankful, so it is better for him or her. And when evil befalls, or when difficulty, calamity befalls a true believer, he is patient or she is patient, so it is better for him or her. Subhanallah. What a pearl of peace. This is Allah. This is the message of Allah. And He always, He always has blessed us in every single way. Yet sometimes we do not realize and recognize. We only pick on certain things that our soul may be desiring for. And we say, Ya Allah, you did not give me this and you did not give me that. Yet if you look at the favors of Allah, there are plenty. So these are some of the blessed pearls that we extract from Surah Al-Fatiha and from the beginning of the Quran. And if you look at the next Surah, which is Surah Al-Baqarah, Allahu Akbar. Right at the beginning, Allah starts off by saying, Alif Lam Mim. Alif Lam Mim. This book, indeed, this book, the Quran, no doubt in it, there is guidance for those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are conscious of Allah, you will achieve guidance from the book. So who are those who are conscious of Allah? There is no doubt in the book, absolutely no doubt. If you would like to achieve the inner comfort, you need to understand, never doubt the word of Allah. It is correct. If science has proven something otherwise, remember that proof is wrong. It will come, there will come a day when science will reprove until it comes in line with the revelation 
of the owner of entire creation. That is peace. This is why, no doubt, myself and yourselves, we are believers. We have not a speck of doubt in the word of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you read it, you should know for a fact that this is the absolute truth and you will achieve peace. Even if you don't understand something temporarily, go and find out, go and ask, go and find from the scholars and you will learn a lot. May Allah's blessings and peace be upon us. So Allah says, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe in the unseen, that is how you will achieve peace. There are angels right now around us, my brothers and sisters. If we could see the unseen, we would see the angels. We would see the mercy of Allah descending upon us because He has promised that to us. We would see the rahmah and the sakina, the calmness, the serenity, not only of the month of Ramadan, but even of a gathering wherein Allah is made mention of. We see it and we feel it, my brothers and sisters. If only we could see the unseen, we would see it in reality around us. Imagine the angels. For me and you, making dua, protecting myself and yourselves. Subhanallah. Angels from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Solely because we have iman. We believe in the unseen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So here Allah is saying, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Two other qualities that are required. The establishing of salah and spending from what Allah has given you. Allah has given you wealth. Whether it is less or more. Some people have a lot, they find it more difficult to give out. When people have less, percentage wise they will give out more sometimes. A man who has 200 rands in his pocket and he takes out 20 rands has taken out 10%. But a man who has 200 million, I don't want to even say the figure he would have to take out to compete with that. In percentage. So my brothers and sisters, in this verse, Allah is saying, when you establish your prayer, when you believe in the unseen, and when you spend from that which Allah has provided you, then you achieve a different level. You understand where you are heading. You realize that come what may, you will be enshrouded in that kafan or the shroud, placed into the same grave as the pauper, and you will also be meeting your hub. And all those millions and billions will never come to your assistance or mine unless we have spent them in the right direction. So establish your salah. A person who has missed their salah or is not bothered about their prayer cannot achieve inner and outer peace. My brothers and sisters, it is impossible to achieve peace without establishing your prayer. Pray to Allah. Adore Him. He created you. He loves you. And he really loves you. He is waiting for you to turn to him. He is waiting for you to turn to him. Where are we? Where am I? Ya Allah, I turn to you in repentance. Grant me forgiveness. Amen. Ya Allah, I turn to you in repentance. Grant me forgiveness. Ya Allah, make my life blessed. Ya Allah, grant every one of us blessings. Ya Allah, we ask you the goodness of this world and the next. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after that, makes mention of another point. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُوقِنُونَ Those who believe in that which we have revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is the Qur'an and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and those who believe in that which was revealed before you as well. We obviously believe. That Allah has revealed the Injil and the Torah, the Bible, and the Torah, the Psalms of David. We believe that Allah has revealed those books because of them having been tampered with. Our belief in them is in a specific manner where we acknowledge it has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the details would be found in the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who are convinced about the hereafter. وَبِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ Those who are totally convinced about the life after death and the meeting with Allah. So if you are convinced about the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will find a lot of comfort and peace. It will keep you away from sin. It will make you engage in repentance often. It will make you check yourself. It will make you have hope. 
Because brothers and sisters, I have no option and you have no option but to have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What other option do you have? Any option? No option. My option is the hope in the mercy of Allah. Your option is in the hope of the, in the, hope of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any other option? Nothing. This is why if you believe you are returning to a Rabb, to a Lord who is most forgiving, most merciful, you die with a smile. Allahu Akbar. You die a happy person. You have contentment and peace in the heart. And you know that when you are going, as much as we are all concerned about the deeds that we have prepared for the Akhirah, but we have hope that flickers, that Allah will overlook our shortcomings and He will multiply our good deeds and inshallah grant us paradise. Let's move on brothers and sisters. We will only select some of the verses that we have recited tonight. Allah makes mention of the qualities of the hypocrites. Why do I have to say them today? Because peace is snatched away from a person who is a hypocrite. If you have a quality of hypocrisy within you, you will never have peace. And Allah says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ There are people who say, we believe in Allah and the last day, but inside they are not believers. Their deeds are in a different valley altogether. Their statement is in another valley altogether. The way they operate in their lives is totally opposite to what they are uttering, that is hypocrisy. Allah says, يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ They seek to deceive Allah, yet they are deceiving none other than themselves. Can anyone deceive Allah? No. Can you deceive your Maker? Never. When we die, what will happen? لا مَنْجَأَ وَلَا مَنْجَأَ مِنْكَ إِلَّا إِلَيْكَ Oh Allah, nobody can protect us and there is no way to run away from you except back to you. You want to run away from Allah, you get back to Allah. Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. May He grant us goodness. So this is why it's important for us to know that hypocrisy in our lives needs to be eradicated. We need to be from those who understand it and realize it. And we take it away completely. This is why Allah says, فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَبْ In their hearts is a disease. A person in whose heart is a disease will not taste peace. The reason is in the hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says at the end of the hadith, أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ لَمُضْغَةِ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ Indeed in the body there is a piece of flesh. If it is pure and good, the whole body will be pure and good. And if it is dirty and evil, sick, the whole body will be dirty, evil and sick. Behold, that piece of flesh is the heart. So if people have a disease in their heart, it will show up in their blood. Today when you have a sickness, you go for a blood test. When you have that blood test, they see what type of disease you have. May Allah protect us all. May He grant cure to all those who are sick and ill. And may He grant forgiveness to all those who have passed away. And when He takes us away, may He take us away with the shahada on our tongues. So my brothers and sisters, a disease of the heart, you need to fight it after recognizing it. There is a diagnosis. What is the diagnosis? Ask yourself, what qualities do I have? If they are bad qualities, I must fight them to remove them. Why do I have hatred and jealousy and envy and deception and so much of love of the material world in my heart? I need to fight it. I need to take it out so that I can focus upon the peace that Allah has revealed to me. And I can focus upon the day that I will arrive in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that I can have peace on that day. This is why Allah says in the Quran regarding the day of judgment, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ On the day your wealth and your children will never help except for the person who comes with a sound heart. Sound heart. Your heart is clean. This is where Allah speaks about the disease of the heart within hypocrites. May Allah purify us.
And hypocrites are such, when there is hypocrisy, they don't understand right from wrong. They will engage in corruption, and when you tell them, brother, why are you engaging in corruption? They will say, I am not corrupt, I am straightforward. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ When it is said to those hypocrites that do not engage in mischief on the earth, they say, no, we are the doers of good. We are the good doers, we do good. And Allah says, nay, they are the ones who are engaging in mischief, but they do not even perceive, they don't even realize it. Why? Hypocrisy in the heart. So this shows us, when our hearts are dirty, brothers and sisters, we lose focus. We don't even know where we are heading. We start running behind things that we are not supposed to run behind, because the heart is dirty. This is why Allah blesses us this month of Ramadan, purify the heart. Work on it. May Allah purify my heart and yours. May Allah grant us a heart that is full of the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah at all times. My brothers and sisters, then Allah says, the instruction that He has ordered all of us, Ya ayyuha nasu abudu rabbakum ulladhi khalaqakum O people, worship He who has created you, your Rabb, the one who has made you, the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of your existence, worship Him. When we prostrate onto the ground, who do we do it for? For Allah. The one who made me, He is owed that I put my head on the ground for Him. I put my nose and my forehead on the ground for Him. Why? He made me. So when the Muslims worship Allah, they are worshipping the one who made them. And Allah means the worship one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our worship. And in that verse, Allah is making mention of the act of worship because it is through worship that Allah will grant us peace. If you want to know, say for example a person growing up wants to know, who should I worship? Well, simple answer. Whoever made you, worship him. Whoever created everything around you, worship him. Whoever made the skies, the earth, whoever sends the rain and causes the crop to grow, whoever gives us so much fruit, worship him. That is the verse of the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, surah, in verse number 21 of Surah Baqarah has made mention of this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us every form of goodness. In fact, even verse number 22 makes mention of the rainfall and the skies and the earth and all the other creatures of Allah. And Allah says, so do not associate partners with Him. For if you associate partners with Allah, what would happen? We would lose peace. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it in the Quran. That those who have been worshipping one another, what happens? On the day of judgment, when they see one another, or they will try to call one another, there will be no response. Because on that day, each one will be worried about himself. It is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who will be worried about his ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his intercession. So brothers and sisters, let's look at something else. Who is there that snatches our peace away? Do you know? We mentioned him right at the beginning of the talk, the devil, Iblis. So in Surah Baqarah, Allah makes mention of the history of that. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ أَتَى وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ When we ordered the angels to acknowledge the status of man by a prostrating to him, in the form of acknowledgement, to acknowledge the status of man, they all acknowledge the status of man besides Iblis, the devil. He refused, Abba, and he became arrogant. He rejected the command of Allah. Two things we learn. One is, be careful of the devil. Be on the lookout. Today, we know in this beautiful city of Cape Town, mashallah, secure city, but we would lock our cars, we would lock our houses, we would arm the alarms that we have. Why? We're on the lookout. There might be a few baddies out there who might be looking to snatch a thing or two that does not belong to them. Why do we look out? Imagine when you have something valuable and you look out everywhere. Nobody knows it's in your pocket, but anyone who passes, 
is a suspect. Anyone who passes you is a suspect. Why? You've got three gold coins in your pocket. Don't raise your hand if you have them. <laughs> three gold coins in your pocket. Everybody is a suspect. Even a friend who's greeting you. You greet him at a distance and you hold his hand, you know. And you want to say, Salaam Alaikum. And you're gone. Because you have something of value, you don't want him to know. And his niya and intention might become spoilt. He might spoil it because he now knows, hey, something happening. Shaitan's niya is spoilt. From the beginning Allah has told us that he declares enmity against you and me. So be on the lookout for him. Turn on the alarm. Arm it. Lock your doors. Lock everything. Make sure he's nowhere near. From a distance you recognize him and walk the other way. Because what you have in terms of iman is far more valuable than three simple Krugerans. Allah protect us. Three gold coins. What's that? Your iman is worth a billion gold coins. In fact, it is priceless. You cannot put a price to it. So look after it, protect it, make an effort to look after it. And serve Allah. Get up in the morning. Do you know this taraweeh that we've just engaged in is such a great act of worship that the hadith says, if we are to stand with the imam and complete, whenever the imam completes, we will achieve a reward of having stood up for the entire night. That is confirmed. So we just stood up for one hour, one hour, ten minutes I think, subhanallah, and we rested every now and again, and here we are, we're still as fresh as ever, and we've achieved the reward of having stood up all night. So shaitan comes to you and says, this is the first night of taraweeh. The masjid was packed, it was hot, we were sweating, imam was slow, ten minutes, his talk was too long, tomorrow we'll just hear it on the radio. So what happened? Shaitan came to us immediately. And he took away from us a spirituality, a gift. We are here in congregation as Jama'atul Muslimin. There could be from amongst us waliyun min awliya illahi ta'ala. There could be from amongst us a friend of Allah. Because of his presence we are all really achieving something. There is a great chance and a great possibility. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May He grant us goodness. Learn to respect one another. Sometimes a pauper out there has more peace than I, than I have and you have. And what would happen? He may be closer to Allah than both of us put together. We don't recognize Him because it takes one to recognize one. And therefore, in order for us to recognize Him, we would also need a little bit of spirituality. May Allah grant us some spirituality. So Allah has declared... That this man, this Iblis is against man. He doesn't like you, O oh man. Watch out. And wherever you have faulted, look at the pearl of peace that Allah has made mention of. فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ Adam alayhi salam, after the sin was committed, received a few words from Allah, so Allah forgave him. What did he receive from Allah? Allah taught him how to seek forgiveness. So he mentioned the words of forgiveness. Allah says, I've forgiven you. Subhanallah. The devil leads us astray. Allah taught us how to achieve the mercy of Allah, the peace and the forgiveness of Allah, and how to wipe out the effect of the devil by saying a few words. Admit your error, regret your sin, Ask Allah's forgiveness and promise not to do it again. By now we should be knowing these four off by heart. Once you've achieved that, sin is wiped out. We are now friends with Allah once again. Imagine someone in business, they dig you down. So they took a hundred thousand rands of yours. Big amount. So we stop talking to him. Why? Suffer the loss. What are the chances of you going to say, I admit my error. I regret it. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. And they say, come back. Any chance? Very small chance. Because man has a heart sometimes that still needs a lot of purification. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rabbul Alameen. The owner of peace. He wants peace. Part of peace is forgiving. You forgive others who have wronged you. Allah forgives you. Allah says, I am earning nothing by holding it against you when you have asked for forgiveness. I am the owner of forgiveness. I will give it to you and I will dish it out on all occasions. Look at it every night. Allah calls out, anyone seeking forgiveness, I will forgive them. We are snoring sometimes. Come Ramadan, 
We are worried about suhoor. How many minutes left, my brother? How many minutes left? Why did you get me up so late? And we're busy with our porridge, both hands. You seen that? They call it a V6, mashallah. One here, one day. One here, one day. Subhanallah. What's happening, my brothers and sisters? Whilst Allah is calling out at that time of suhoor, early in the morning, just whilst you are allowed to eat still, Allah is calling out, anyone seeking forgiveness? Just ask Allah's forgiveness. It's a pearl. It's a pearl. You will achieve peace. Ya Allah, I'm looking for peace. I'm looking for happiness, contentment. So many things I need. Here's my list. Repeat the list every day. For one year, two years, five years, ten years. Believe me, you'll be ticking off the stuff on that list. By the qudra of Allah, the power of Allah, you will be ticking it off. That's the gift of Allah. But with us, we lose hope. We don't call out. We worry about that momentary, temporary peace of my belly for a little while of the day because it's Ramadan. I need to pack away as much as possible. And you don't understand, the more you pack, the quicker you become hungry in the day of Ramadan. Do you know that? Try it. Eat less for suhoor. Have a quality meal. Whole wheat and so on. Fiber. Low GI. And see, you last the whole day. Five o'clock, you'll still be the same person thanking Allah. But when you pack away, losing focus, what will happen? Come 10 o'clock in the morning, your belly begins to rumble in a way that you're embarrassed to stand next to your friends. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless us. May Allah grant us goodness. So my brothers and sisters, this is Allah. He taught us how to achieve forgiveness. Then he says, something interesting to the children of Yaqub, the children of Jacob, may peace be upon him, commonly known as the children of Israel. Allah says, Ya Bani Israel, Azkuru ni'mati alati an'amtu alaykum. O children of Yaqub, may peace be upon him. May Allah bless them. O children of Jacob, remember, remember the gift of Allah upon you. I want to stop there for a moment. Let us draw that verse to ourselves. Has Allah not favored us, my brothers and sisters? Do we not have Iman? Do we not have so much goodness? Are we not sitting and breathing, watching and listening? Are we not in the house of Allah? Can we not hear the words that are being recited, that of Allah? Are these not the blessings of Allah? Has Allah not given us countless blessings? So remember the gift of Allah upon you. People sometimes read this verse and they say, those children of Israel have forgotten the gift of Allah upon them, so Allah is reminding them in the Quran, not realizing that yes, that may be a lesson, but the greater lesson is for us. What's the point of pointing fingers at others when we ourselves have forgotten the gift of Allah upon us? Allah gave us so many gifts. Our parents, if they are alive, they are a gift, a means of entering paradise, a means of peace and comfort. If we have children, they are a gift. If you have a spouse, your spouse is a gift. Be faithful, be dedicated. Today, marriages are breaking because the peace is snatched away by promiscuity, by becoming infidelous. May Allah protect us by adultery, by flirting. A small, simple flirt, your peace is gone. Why? You cannot sleep. Your phone needs to be with you. It must be off. You've got two SIM cards. You've got four phones. Subhanallah. Allah protect us. I asked one brother, brother, why do you have four phones? He says, well Allah allows me four wives, I've only got one. At least I can have four phones. <laughs> what a foolish answer. My brother, that is foolish. Four phones, you are going to really snatch away your peace. You don't know how to use technology. Why are you flirting? Do you know when you commit a sin, it is actually like a debt that you put forth. You owe it now. It's going to be taken away from you at some point. So don't think you can achieve peace through sin. This is Allah telling us, seek Allah's forgiveness and He will show you the path. You want peace? Lead a simple life. You will never have everything in your life as you want it. You cannot have every woman or every woman cannot have every man in this world. No! You need to be happy with what you have. Wait for the Akhirah. The perfection will come then. Subhanallah. At the moment, hold on, be patient. Struggle and strive. Everyone is struggling and striving in their own way. You might be comparing your marriage to another family whose marriage is on harder rock than yours. If I can wear it that way. Allahu Akbar. And they might be looking at you and thinking, wow, look at how blessed you are. This is all the gift of Allah. We cannot read what is going on in the lives of others. Appreciate your own life and understand it. 
close your focus and you will achieve lots of peace inner and outer. This is Ramadan. I call on all those who are engaged in extramarital affairs or in any form of illicit immoral behavior. Quit it today for the sake of Allah. Cut it out. It will come up with a lot of peace by cutting it out. A lot of peace. You will achieve the comfort. Your home will be blossoming once again. You will find the spirituality, what we term ruhaniyyah, will return into your home. Why? Because you have now cut your focus to what is halal for you. You have cut your focus to that which will achieve the pleasure of Allah. This is how to achieve the peace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And in order to understand the gift of Allah, the verses we read tonight, the instruction that has been repeated the most is the instruction of salah, sabr and zakah. These three things. Look, Allah says, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَارْكَعُوا مَا الرَّاكِعِينَ Establish your salah, give your zakah, and bow with those who are bowing. Join the congregation, join everyone. If you are not reading salah, there are others who are reading salah. You are losing out. You don't want to come to the masjid, the imam is still there, the mu'adbin is still there, some of the sufuf are still full, the lines are full, you are not there. So don't be absent, make an effort, join and a dedicated, concerted effort, not just for one day, but for years on end, Wallahi, your life will change. You are searching for peace, it's in the house of Allah. Come for salah, establish your zakah, and remember, join those who are prostrating, prostrate together, as far as possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And this is why, the very same instruction, Allah says it in another place, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْنِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Verse number 45 of Surah Al-Baqarah. And verse number 153, Allah says, O oh, you who believe, seek assistance, seek help through patience and prayer. Indeed, Allah is with those who bear patience. You want help? Seek it through patience and prayer. Today, a small problem. I want to break my marriage. Why? I, you know what? I saw him looking in that direction. Believe me. Istainu bi sabri wa salah. Pray to Allah. Bear patience. Tackle the crisis in a humane way, in a mature way, in a way that is befitting of adults. And deal with it in a way that you can understand reconciliation between you and Allah is far more important than reconciliation between you and fellow humans. But that would be a link between you and Allah. If you are ready to reconcile with fellow humans, you will find it far easier to reconcile with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But a person who finds it hard, every little thing they want to be on their own, subhanallah. What patience have they borne regarding the difficulties that people have placed in their lives? This is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, a person who mixes with others and bears patience regarding the evil that comes to him from them is far more in terms of betterment than a person who doesn't mix with anyone because he's fearing their evil. These are categories of people. Yes, if you really cannot manage, you can stay away. But if you can manage, you are a more powerful person. Allah has given you a gift. Don't let that lead you to injustice and lead you to bad qualities and bad behavior. May Allah protect us. So Allah speaks about the hardening of the heart, how bad the heart becomes when it becomes hard. Some people, no matter what comes in their direction, they won't read salah. No matter what comes in their direction, they won't turn to Allah. No matter what comes in their direction, they will not make peace with their brother or sister for a petty, petty, petty issue. Why? Because the heart is hardened. So Allah says, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ Speaking about, obviously, a previous nation, and Allah is speaking about the hardening of the heart. Allah says, Then your hearts became hard, even harder than a rock. Similar to a rock or harder than a rock. Why harder than a rock? If someone says, This man's heart is harder than a rock, what does that mean? That means no matter what comes to their direction, they're not softening up. There's no softening between them and Allah, between them and fellow humans, between them and the good behavior that they are supposed to be engaging in. No softening, not at all. And Allah said, you know what? 
from amongst the rock. They are those that are split and water comes out. They are those that rivers flow from the rocks. But the man's heart is such that when it becomes hard, no water, nothing gushes forth, nothing comes forth in terms of goodness. May Allah soften our hearts. This is why my brothers and sisters constantly ask Allah to soften your heart. When a person is engaged in a sin and they do not want to look in the right direction, they definitely need to ask Allah to soften their hearts. May Allah soften our hearts. What a blessed month of Ramadan. The fact that this masjid is full and the fact that the entire ummah more so is celebrating the beginning of Ramadan almost all together this year is a sign that inshallah the unity that we are so much searching for is right at our doorstep by the will of Allah. The love that we need to have within our hearts, my brothers and sisters, we so desperately need it. Wallahi, it is at our doorstep. All we need to do, open the door and embrace it. May Allah grant us love. And may He make us learn to love one another. Really, my brothers and sisters, Allah is the one who knows what is in your heart. If you realize that and you understand it, you achieve peace. أَوَلَا يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُّونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ Do they not know that Allah knows everything that they make apparent and that which they hide? That which they hide and that which they announce. Allah knows everything. I cannot run away from Allah. I might run away from human beings. I might be able to hide from this man or that. But from Allah, there is no hiding, my brothers and sisters. He knows everything. When we understand that and realize it, again, we achieve that peace that we are searching for. It is Allah, the owner of peace, that will grant it to us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important it is to fulfill the instructions of Allah. And how the good qualities that Allah had prescribed, not only upon the children of Jacob, may peace be upon him, Yaqub alayhi salam, but upon us as well. Listen to some of these instructions. Allah says, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Make mention, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of the covenant that we had taken of the children of Yaqub alayhi salatu wa salam, not to worship anyone besides Allah. Covenant number one. That's the promise we made to Allah. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا and to be good and kind to parents, it was a covenant unto Allah. You want to achieve peace, develop your link with your parents, no matter what. Allahu Akbar. Develop your link with your parents. And oh my dear parents, make it easy for your children to develop a link with you. If you have no link with your parents, or parents are being an obstacle, whereby they are being unreasonable. In that particular case, we have a lot to work upon in this month of Ramadan. And we have to, inshallah, open those doors and embrace, as I said a few moments ago. The doors are there. Open them and embrace. وَبِالْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ And the relatives, we need to develop a relation with them. And the orphans and the poor people, develop a link with these, you will achieve peace. You will achieve goodness. What have you done for the orphans? What have you done for the poor? How do you speak to the beggars? Even if you don't give them anything, say a good word. Say a kind word. That is something that will inshallah result in inner peace, outer peace. You are at peace with your society, your community. Amazing. And Allah says, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَكُمْ لَا تَسْفِكُونَ دِمَاءَكُمْ وَلَا تُخْرِجُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ Two more things that Allah took within the covenant of the children of Israel, the children of Jacob, may peace be upon him, Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam, and the lesson is for all of us. What are these two things? We took the covenant that you would not spill the blood of one another. You would not Kill one another. Take a look at where the Ummah is today. Everywhere we look, it's Muslims against Muslims. Why is it the case? Look at the countries. People are blaming the non-Muslims. They may have a role to play, but why are we allowing them to use us to do the dirty job? Because we have not understood the covenant of Allah. 
Allah says, we took a promise from you not to kill one another and not to drive one another out of your homes. Today we are driving people out of their homes. May Allah protect us. So these are some of the powerful verses that Allah makes mention of. And Allah speaks about magic and how dirty it is. A person who engages in magic has lost his iman. Man sahara faqad ashraq. Do you know that? The hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whoever has cast a spell has associated partners with Allah. Straight. Man sahara faqad ashraq. Whoever has cast a spell has engaged in association of partnership with Allah. Shirk. May Allah protect us. And this is why Allah says, it is kufr to learn it. And it is shirk to engage in it. وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانِ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرِ Sulaiman alayhi salam, he did not disbelieve, but the shayateen disbelieved. They are the ones, the shayateen are the ones who taught people magic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Brothers and sisters, I want to end on this powerful note. Let us not blame all our problems on black magic. Or someone did something. Never blame our problems on people having done things on us. Today, we have a lot of people who will tell you, you know what brother, you are bewitched. You are not successful because someone did something. And when you ask them who did it, they will tell you such and such a person from amongst your own family. Why do they say this? They get that response from the jinn. The jinn lies. The jinn's whole idea. The Quran is filled with verses that warn us about the jinn. And inshallah we will come to them. The jinn's whole idea to destroy family relations. To destroy relations amongst friends and amongst communities, amongst muslimin. So when they have pinpointed a name, believe me, they are wrong. That person is innocent. Even if there is something wrong with you, the person they pinpointed is wrong. They are innocent. Make peace with them tonight. Sometimes people will find it tough. Well, if you find it tough, we, this whole month, are going to be concentrating on searching for peace. We want to look for peace. You want peace? Make peace with those whom you are accusing. They are not guilty. Believe me, Jibreel alayhi salam did not come to someone and say the name of this particular person that happened to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone. He was the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect us. May He guide us. May He open our doors. Inshallah, tomorrow we will go through more of the verses of Allah. The idea, as I said, to search for the peace. To look for the peace. To look for that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in this book of peace. May Allah bless us all. Brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we have completed the first taraweeh. Just to mention a quick point. Do you know there is a difference between leading a salah like Isha or Maghrib or Fajr? and leading taraweeh. One is like running the 100 meter dash, and the other is a marathon. So this is why sometimes you find the Imam, in Salatul Isha, he's raised his voice, and he's happy, because it's a short Salah. And yet, when it comes to taraweeh, he is spaced out, calm, relaxed, hoping that the last raka'ah will be similar to the first one, because he knows it's a marathon, and he's got to carry on all the way. But may Allah accept it from us. May Allah grant us goodness. The fast we have tomorrow, please pray for me, we pray for you. And the Ummah at large, brothers and sisters, we love you for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us the happiest month, the most blessed month we've ever had. And may He grant us Jannah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.